How's it going guys? I'm your host Karban Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Adventure Quest video and as you guys can tell from the title and thumbnail of the video already, today we are going to be talking about gold and Z token farming inside of Adventure Quest. Now today's video is mainly targeted at level 150 characters or max level characters. If you are not a guardian and your max level is only level 135, this guide can still work for you though it may not be as effective because the monsters you are fighting may not be the level 150 version and as such you may not be getting the maximum amount of gold you can possibly get from farming these said monsters this being said though if you are not max level yet then chances are you probably don't need a lot of gold and i will highly recommend you guys to check out my exp and leveling guide for adventure quest first leveling up to your max level before going ahead to watch this guide and use the information in this guide to help you get the amount of gold and z tokens that you want now the information inside of this guide is accurate at the time of this recording which is 8th of September 2021. The time at which you may be watching this video may be weeks, months, years down the road. So the information may or may not have already been outdated by the time you watch this video as the game does receive weekly updates. Also keep in mind that the strategies that I've shown in this video is for my build only and right now I'm running a Beastmaster Mage build and on top of that it is also specific to my equipment. The equipment that you have may be different and your build may also be different so the strategy, uh, there is more than one strategy that you can use to farm these monsters depending on your build. This is not meant to be a strategy guide on how to farm the monsters but rather a location guide on where to find the monsters to farm the Go and the Z tokens. Without further ado, let's jump right into the guide. So the very first method here is the most accessible method that is available to everyone who has at least a guardianship and this method is available all year round. So the fastest way to do this would be to go to today's event assuming the void is there. If the void isn't there then the only way to get there is through the guardian tower. So you want to go to the, the guardian tower and go to the void manually if it's not under today's event and you want to click on battle. Do not click on void bosses because that is not the boss that you want to face off against. You want to go to battle and you will be facing off against Mr. The frost Vilvers every single time so he has 275 luck stack as you guys can see here if you do not have your luck stack maxed or trained in any way then chances are he's going to go first whether or not you have an ambush potion with you so because i don't have any luck stack trained for my build he is going to go first and that means i want to shield up in the strongest defensive uh, fire setup that I have because otherwise he's going to do a ton of damage and on top of that he will also inflict a blind relative to the amount of damage he does so the more damage he does to you the stronger the blind will be and if the blind gets too strong then obviously you won't be able to nuke him down in one turn because your attacks are going to miss so you can see here his uh, blind actually did not inflict that time which I got really lucky most of the time you will get hit with the blind but that is alright at 14% fire resist he will inflict a minus 30 9.1 blind on you that's honestly not the end of the world all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to switch over to my new king setup and go ahead and nuke him down before he has a chance to take a second turn so you want to set up everything like your purple rain your arcane amplification una polka bring out whatever boosters you have for me i'm using polala if you have the eyes or darkness boosters those will work even better but because i don't have them then i'm not going to use them uh power gauntlet is not going to work against him because of his boss boost so I, honestly i wouldn't try it out at all because it's just a waste of time you can use other stuff like mecha damage sheer nuts because those are effects that will be inflicted on yourself which means that they are going to hit every single time and then you want to get at least one turn of celerity because chances are if you don't kill him within the two turns that you have then uh you're not going to win okay so you really only need one turn of celerity so we'll do essence up and then we'll uh change everything back using purple rain afterwards switch over to a damage miss i can i'm going to use frigid zorbeck door here i also have blood contract which i can use if i want to and then i want to imbue with law okay so obviously the uh, specific elemental rope is going to work better here but i'm just going to use general Lissus ropes and it will work just fine and you can use either a darkness spell or a ice spell to kill him if you're a warrior then you want to use a skill or like a normal attack instead and if you're a ranger then you know you can try and nuke him down using other methods as well so i'll be using destruction burst over here and let's see how we do okay nice one more time and done so this guy is going to give me a grand total of 2.6 million gold every time i kill him and that is a 
lot. So the max gold cap for Guardians is, I would say it's close to 100 million. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it's 90 something million uh, gold for non for Guardians. Okay, for X Guardians, I'm not sure what the amount is. It's going to be about 10% higher if I'm not wrong. And for non-Guardians, the amount is going to be slightly lower as well. So 2.6 million gold per kill, really, really fast. You should be able to take him down in one turn. And then afterwards, head back here. You'll be automatically healed up and then you can go into battle against him once again through this button. You want to heal up on your SP using Essence Orb every now and then so that you have enough SP going into the next fight. Now, this next method is a little bit more exclusive because you have to wait for this monster to come around during the Void rotation. Once again, it's going to be the same place, which is the Void inside of the Guardian Tower, and you have to wait till the monster shows up here. So this is not the monster that we want. The monster that we want is actually Kakus, and if he's not during, on during the rotation, then the only uh, time whereby you can access him all year round is if you buy his house portrait for 1,500 tokens. Apart from his house portrait, obviously you will also need a house, and the cheapest house is about 100 over tokens, so you need a grand total of about 1,600 over tokens if you want to access this farming method all year round. So I'm going to go to my house now to show you guys the monster, and one one annoying thing about the portraits is that it has to cycle through all of the portraits that you have. So you have a lot of portraits then yeah, it's going to eat up a little bit of uh, time as well. But for me, I don't really have a lot of portraits, so that's fine. So I'm going to teleport here and this mo is the monster that you want to fight called Kakus. Okay, so this monster is more meant for mages as well as rangers because uh, warriors are not going to do so well against this guy simply because he has a backlash effect that reflects 92.6% of uh, damage that are normal player attack so anything that's not a normal player attack you're not going to be eating the backlash damage so this is perfect for mages or for rangers who are farming for warriors you probably have better options so if you're a warrior build then I would not recommend this method at all so once again do your regular setup and all of that stuff okay he has really really high resist against fire earth and energy so you can use any of those elements to take him out once again it's not worth to go ahead and use your power gauntlet because chances are he's probably going to resist it and you want to do essence up shadow feeder pendant make sure you get at least one turn of celerity nope we don't have any yet so i'm going to continue uh, clicking until we have <coughs> Okay, nice. So we got the celerity, so I'm going to purple rain everything back. And now I'm going to equip my damage boosting miscellaneous item over here, which is Frigid Zorback Dog, and then just going to nuke him down with Destruction Burst. So even though he has a bit more HP than the Mr. Frost Veilverse monster, his resistors are also higher, which means you'll probably be able to take him down in one turn. He does give 1 million gold lesser than Mr. Frost Veilverse, but chances are you will be able to kill him a lot faster and a lot more consistently compared to Mr. Frost Veilverse, which is why I prefer farming this guy over Mr. Frost Veilverse. Okay, so once you beat him, you'll get access to the shop, whereby you can use the Pyromancer, Blood Mage, and Blood Blade armor. Okay, so if you don't want to use Generalist's Rope, you can also use Pyromancer Blood Mage and the skill that is built in or the spell that is built into the armor to go ahead and take out Kakus and that will work perfectly fine as well. Tutti Fruitcake Zark is once again another monster that is part of the Void Rotation series of monsters that you can farm. Unfortunately, if it is not under the Void Rotation, currently you will not be able to farm it unless you have the House Painting. So I do have the House Painting, which means I will be able to access it all year round. The House Painting, like all of the other House Paintings, do cost 1,500 Z tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and access the Tutti Fruitcake Zark from the House Painting over here. And the thing about Tutti Fruitcake Zark is that it has the lowest health out of all the monsters I mentioned on the list. But at the same time, it also has the lowest resistances. One thing to note is that if you have the uh, Backlash, if you are running a Backlash build and have the Doom Light armors and all of that Backlash stuff, then this is the current fastest method of farming gold inside of the entire game. If you are running a Backlash build and farming this specific monster. If you are running any other build, then it is probably not going to be as fast as some of the other methods that I've mentioned on this list. Also, one thing to note is that 2T Fruitcake Zark has a good chance of paralyzing you. So this is not a super consistent method of farming uh, gold. Okay, so with the mage build here, 
you can just go ahead and use all of your boosters okay after using purple rain you do need to use boosters for this because of how low the resistances are okay ideally you want to use a energy nuke king spell but for me fire will work too and so will light because they are at 40 percent which honestly isn't too bad so i want to imbue with law over here once I have done my boosters, this monster is susceptible to power gauntlet once in a while. So if you get lucky, then uh, you will be able to land the hit. For me, I didn't get lucky this time. So nope, I didn't manage to land the hit. And you will want at least one turn of celerity. Chances are, if you don't kill it within one turn, then there's a good chance that you might get paralyzed the next turn. And your run will get screwed. So yeah, you most definitely want to get at least one turn of celerity. So purple rain everything back. Bring out your damage boosting miscellaneous item and nuke him down with the element spell that I mentioned here so I'm going to use destruction burst and done all right so 1.6 million gold same gold gain as Kakers and just ab and about equal efficiency if you're using a mage build Next up is the Zarnado monster. So unfortunately, this monster requires you to have a house painting as well in order to access it. And you can get this seasonal house painting every year during Shark Week, which is on July of 17. Okay, so you want to get go to your house and access the portrait once you have bought it for 1,500 Z tokens. What's good about this monster is that uh, it is... Uh, great for farming regardless of whichever build you are doesn't matter if you're a warrior a mage or a ranger you can go ahead and use this farming method the downside however is that this monster has even more hp than cakers but of course even higher resist than cakers and on top of that it also gives 500,000 gold lesser this used to be the best farming spot before cakers came out but um this is a lot more universal method of farming gold if you want to play, uh, let's say, a warrior build or you want to change your build to a warrior build. Also, this one, you can basically just uh, go ahead and nuke him down using the standard method. So I'm going to do all of the boosters here. This boss is also susceptible to your power gauntlet. So you can go ahead and try and use power gauntlet on this boss if you want to. For me, I am not going to bother because it is not needed. If you are struggling to deal enough damage, then you may want to try out power gauntlet. This boss doesn't have any boost which is uh, why power gauntlet can sometimes work but it doesn't work all the time so keep that in mind okay so all we need is really one turn of celerity and we already got it so now we are going to purple rain everything back whoops this is Zarnado. Now, the annoying thing about this is that uh, you do get the Zarnado spell after the first time you beat him. So, you want to be careful on not clicking on that by accident. So, we have to call back our Polala over here. Bring back our damage boosting miscellaneous item. Check that we have imbued with law and then go ahead and destruction burst down this monster. This monster is weak to fire and earth. So, any of those element uh, nuking spells or skills will work perfectly fine. So, that's 1.1 million gold. 500k gold lesser than Kakers, but still a super fast farming method nonetheless. Alright, so next up we have the mighty Shadow Gog monster. And this way of farming does require you to have a house but you do not need to buy any house portraits and like i mentioned earlier the cheapest house is only slightly over 100 tokens so it's honestly not that expensive and this monster and this method of farming i have covered it before in the exp and leveling guide for adventure quest so you can use this method to go ahead and farm go as well visit this specific neighbor over here and you'll face up against this mighty shadow god monster now this may not be as consistent simply because of the fact that uh, this monster has a chance to has a very high chance of going first and gaining celerity which means it can just keep attacking until you die so yeah you have a good chance of dying even on turn one if you are unlucky but for me luckily enough he didn't manage to one shot with me and the good thing about this monster is that he has very low health so you really don't need to do a lot of fanciful boosters what i'm going to do is just going to do the back of mixed nuts here and i'm going to do shadow feeder pendant to ensure that i at least get another turn off against this monster so we want to use wind to kill off this monster and for that i'll be bringing off my big dictionary okay you can go ahead and use any other wind spell or skill and you should be able to kill him just fine imbue with law just to double check and make sure that we kill him attack and go ahead and use the first spell over here he also has very very low resist so you honestly shouldn't have too much trouble trying to kill him now another problem with this method is that you have to go back to battle on and heal in order to go into it again but you can see here 
it's actually quite fast because you can skip through boosting all of that uh, fancy stuff because of how low HP the monster has. Now I'm going to try one time whereby I don't use any boost, but uh, it is going to be a little bit riskier. I think you need at least one boost. I'm going to do the uh, back of mixed nuts boost. Let's see if this will be enough to kill him. Okay. Yes, it will be. Okay, so uh, at least one boost, I would say, just to make sure that you kill it. So this can be faster or slower, depending on uh, how long you take to do all of your boosting. It does only give a million gold, so do keep that in mind. Now, on to the method for people who don't have a house, who don't have any tokens to buy house painting. You can go to Twilly under the Anniversary Events, Dragon of Time event. You will need to have completed all of the quests up until the Seek Red in order to access this method. And this is similar to one of the methods that I've talked about in the EXP and Leveling Guide as well. So you, there is a lot of talk here, but you only have to do it one time, and then you can just... Uh, keep going again and again after you get through this first part. So the monster that you want to farm here is Queen Hybe over here. Queen Hybe has a chance of killing you first because of the fact that she has pretty high luck and there is a good chance that she will be going first. But the good thing about her is that she does have 200% resist to darkness and very very low HP. So you should be able to one shot her whenever you feel like it. Alright, so we are going to start battle here. And yeah, if you're unlucky, she has a chance of killing you outright if your light resist is not that high. For me, she didn't kill me this time around, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Right, so we are going to Purple Rain over here, and we are going to Arcane M as well as uh, do all of our boosters. Okay, 3200 HP and 200% to darkness. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with the damage, uh, with the power gauntlet because I don't think it's necessary. I think it's best if you can get at least one turn of celerity to ensure that you do kill her. Okay, so we already got the celerity. Make sure we are imbued with law. And then, whoops, once again, I forget. So we have to purple rain. Alright, nice. And then bring out Polala again. Bring out the damage boosting miscellaneous item. And then we want to nuke him down with Destruction Burst. Any good spell or skill that is Darkness Element will kill him. Now, this method is uh, quite a lot slower than all of the methods I mentioned before. Because Queen Hybe only gives a, a minuscule amount of gold at 444,000. That is less than half of what all of the other monsters uh, gave. Okay, all of the other monsters that I mentioned earlier gave. But the thing about Queen Hybe is that it is a completely free-to-play method. You do not need a house. You do not need house paintings and and you can access her all year round. Now, we have come to the Z token farming portion of the guide, and the number one method for farming Z tokens inside of the game is buying a house and doing nothing. That's right, you heard me right guys. So all you have to do is buy any house and it will accumulate interest rate over time until the point whereby it is going to you are able to sell the house for more than when you initially bought it. Of course, this is going to take some time and the more expensive house you have, the faster your Z token gain. Ultimately, the percentages on how much interest rate your house gains will be the same regardless of your house, but with a more expensive house, you are obviously gaining Z tokens much faster than say a cheaper house even though the interest rate is exactly the same. So I first bought my house for 17,500 Z tokens and now my house is worth 18,863 Z tokens already more than when I bought it for. So if I were to sell it now then I will meet then I will be able to make a small profit. If you are planning to play this game in the long term, then I highly recommend you to go ahead and buy a house. All you have to do is leave the house there and basically just don't touch it. You can come back to the game two or three years later and find out that you're rich in Z tokens after selling your house and that is how good this method is. All right. Next up, if you really want to farm Z tokens daily, adventurers can farm a maximum of 25 Z tokens per day and guardians can farm a maximum of 50 Z tokens per day. Now, first things first, you can go ahead and farm the Queen Hybe monster, which I mentioned just now. And the Queen Hybe monster, because it is level 150, it uh, dies pretty quickly to any darkness nuke and also has pretty low HP. That makes her a really good farming spot for farming tokens if you want to farm her. She's also good for farming gold as well as farming 
farming EXP. So Queen Hybe is basically used for farming just about anything and it's probably the number one monster you want to go for if you want to farm all three of those things at the same time. The next monster that you can consider farming, this one does require you to have a house, is you can farm the Nerf Kitten Skyon. Now the Nerf Kitten Skyon is only level 130. This is the house ID that you want to use. She was used for EXP and leveling up as well in my EXP and leveling guide. So before I reach max level, if you're planning on farming this for EXP, then you can go ahead and try and farm tokens out of this monster as well. Alright, so the house is guarded. There's only one Nerf Kitten Sky on. Okay, and she dies pretty easily to basically just about any uh, Earth attack. So we are going to switch over to our Earth damage over here. Attack, and we want to do the earth damage okay so she has less than 1000 hp which means that you probably don't even need any boosters to take her out there we go easy peasy not a lot of gold but obviously going to give a bunch of exp if you're not yet max level now the thing about this matter is of course you have to go back to town and heal up but you know it is still a relatively fast method now the last method that i want to talk about and this is the newest method inside of the game and i don't think i've seen anyone talking about this yet is today's event and the necromancer class skills that's right guys if you guys have been watching my videos uh, recently on covering the necromancer class skills you'll realize that the necromancer class skills as i'm leveling up the skills and fighting the monsters inside of that quest they're they're rate of them dropping z tokens is extremely high and this is not coincidental and it's not for me only i have seen a lot of other users reporting the same thing for some weird reason i don't know if this is intentional or this is coincidental and i don't know if this is going to be a permanent thing but the monsters inside of the necromancer class skills while you are leveling up the class they have an incredibly high rate of dropping z tokens in fact i am getting a z token drop almost every other monster you guys can go ahead and check out all my necromancer uh, class skills video where i go through the leveling up of the uh, class skills of necromancer and you will see how often i am getting z tokens out of those monsters i don't know why that is the case it could be a bug it could not be intended but for the moment right now i think that is the best z token farming method inside the game and if the staff decides not to change that then that will probably remain to be the best place to farm z tokens inside of the game so that is it for this video guys my guide on go and z token farming inside of adventure quest 2021 huge shout out to the people over on the aq wiki site the authors there and everyone else who has contributed to writing the guide there most of the information in this video comes from that guide i will leave a link to the guide down in the description below if you guys don't like to watch the video you guys can go ahead and read up the guide on your own though i do have uh, some few other points included inside of this video that is not found inside of that written guide Alright, so let me know down in the comments below if you guys found this guide helpful Maybe I missed out something or there's something else that you guys would like to add on Please do let me know down in the comments below and yeah, that's going to do it for this video guys If you guys have found the video helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content Till the next time, I'm your host Carbon Gaming, peace out